Hello again, everybody. This is Derek, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. We are continuing with our Sarissa building project for our Napoleonics game. And uh, we've gone ahead and we've assembled them all, and I've got them sitting here. Uh, plus, I, I brought out my uh, AWI buildings as well. I think I might touch up on them uh, just to make sure that we've got them all painted. Okay, now before we continue with painting these, I want to address uh, something. Um, after doing a little research, I found that 90% of the roof colors were either um, like a like a uh, like a reddish tile or a gray tile, like like a like a gray, um, not a green, not a blue, uh, but. There were metallic roofs. This one is going to be a metallic roof. Uh, this one is also, this is going to be a painted metallic roof. Uh, and uh, the blue ones, I've decided I'm going to be painting them with the gray roof. Okay. Uh, actually, not the dark. Uh, yeah, the dark gray roof, the church, um, and one of these houses. No, this house uh, is going to have the red roof. I think. Okay, this building is going to be wooden, and I think I'm going to paint this roof a dark brown, because that was an option. So that's going to be a dark brown. Uh, <clears throat> this is going to be uh, actually a metallic, right? I said I was going to do metallic on that. I think I'm going to make that one a whole red as well. I think I'm going to abandon the green, as we already know, and I'm going to be painting that gray. And then this is going to be the wood. Those two buildings, basically similar buildings, are going to be wooden. And this guy... I still am not sure if I want to make that a metallic, um, but I don't think I do. I think I want to make it a painted roof. Uh, it's probably going to be a whitish, um, a whitish roof. We'll have to figure that out. I think I'm going to go with white on that. I'm going to... Just mark it with this white gray, just to just to remind me. Um, okay, so any also the majority of the buildings uh, in the period, if they weren't, uh, some of these are for American War of Independence. Okay, so uh, I plan, even though I might use them during my Napoleonic game, I'm going to paint them as if they were American War of Independence because I still plan to use or play American War of Independence games. So I'll be using those buildings there. Uh, but in Europe uh, and in the States, but in, in primarily in Europe, which is this Napoleonics is what I'm focusing on, 99% of the buildings had a white or a cream color uh, coating over their uh, bricks or wood. So um, 
that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do that's why i've got the uh this mig cream white or this brain matter beige uh i plan to paint those as the white so far so good um and then we'll do like wood slats and stuff like that but to get everything started i wanted to paint the roofs first <clears throat> Okay, so the wood slats, uh, like on this one, uh, I'm going to be painting this dark brown, plus the, everything on these are going to be dark brown, and then I'm going to come back over it with uh, a beige brown to make it, well, the wood, the wooden parts of it. Now, even though this has uh, obvious wood slats, they are going to be painted white. So I might be jumping around a little bit from paint to paint or whatever, but I'm gonna try to stay in one color at a time. Now, on this building, I don't know if you can see, but there are wooden slats. I am not, or um, what do they call it? Wood frame, I guess, the frame of the house. I'm not going to even try to keep it in the lines, right? I'm deliberately making a mess of things. Going over the lines, what I mean. And you'll see why I'm doing this uh, in a moment. Um, okay, now there is a point I need to make. I did... Okay, like I primed these before I assembled them, right? If I knew the direction I was going with the colors that I was going to be using on these models, I would I might have primed them different colors. Like every building that was going to be white, I probably would have primed white. And then every building that was going to be wooden, I would have primed with the brown. You know, and like some of the roofs, instead of priming them blue or green, I would have primed them the gray or the red. Okay, so once I got these assembled, and once everything was dry, I went over them with a thinned out Mod Podge, a 50 a 50-50, like I watered it down to make it uh, not runny, but to make it more less likely to clump up. And I coated the entire model. And the reason why I did that, not to, not to uh, glue it together, but to kind of give it a sealant so it would, so the glue wouldn't absorb into it. Not the glue, the paint. Because I was anticipating painting and having it absorbed into the wood. I'm just ensuring everything that's going to be wood frame is covered and I'm not really concerned with the in-betweens and the reason why is I'm still going to paint those all right it looks like it's going to take me a hot minute to paint each of these 
uh, models. So what I think I'm going to do, and uh, you can follow along with me, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint one building at a time as a video. Break this up into parts. So in this part, we'll be painting the water wheel. I would think this would be like a mill, right? The water wheel turns the grinder on the ground floor. And the miller lives in the top floor. Maybe he sells grain out of the... And you can, again, you can see that I'm not really concerning myself with staying in the lines. I mean, I'm not going overboard, but I am also not uh, focusing on staying inside the lines. I'm focusing on making sure that the frame gets painted brown. Um, on these buildings, the ones with the little uh, thatch, thatch root, the uh, lattice work inside the windows, I am trying to avoid the lattice work. Okay. I think the doors should be wood as well. But I am going to, this is only an undercoat for the door because I plan to uh, lighten the door up with the beige brown. It's okay if I get it onto the threshold because I'm going to paint the threshold gray anyway. A lot like the bricks that are around it. Now it's okay if you paint the door a different color, blue, red, yellow, green, because um, that was up to the owners. A lot of them painted their doors, but some of them didn't. Okay, and these are going to be wood. Now I considered uh, taking some of my Mod Podge that I base coated these guys with, you know, or uh, sealed them, I should say. I considered taking some of that Mod Podge and uh, painting the chimney with it. Sealing the chimney, but also sprinkling some sand on it to give it um, like a stucco texture. Um, but I decided against it. Yeah, you didn't even see me assemble this building. I didn't record it. Because I wasn't sure if I was going to need this building or want this building in my Napoleonic, my Quattro Bra collection. Uh, but it's just a good Napoleonic generic building, Riverside building. So... I can use an American War of Independence. I could use it. I could probably use it in World War II or even go as far back as the Middle Ages, maybe. Because there's nothing really nothing really um era defining on it. 
Now, I'm not going all the way down on these side panels because there's brick, and that's the wood stops on top of the brick. Make sure I just didn't miss any spots. Putting a second coat on anywhere where I think it kind of absorbed. And if it absorbed a lot, that's okay. Okay, I'm switching brush sizes. I'm going with a bigger brush to paint the paddle wheel. I could probably go with an even bigger brush. There's a lot of surface area here. Needs to get painted. Let me paint this paddle wheel inside and out, and then I'll be right back. All right, so now <clears throat> I'm putting a little brown on the outside of where the water wheel is because I'm going to put some grass or something there, but I'm going to leave that. I'm going to turn that into water. Uh, but you can see how the water wheel, just by painting it brown, um, really makes a difference on how that model looks. <clears throat> and of course, the doors and the wood. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to let that dry a little bit so I don't handle it. And I'll be right back uh, for the next step. All right, we're back with the water mill. Um, I've decided that I'm just going to go ahead and do the roof uh, now. And what we're going to be using is this P3 Iron Hull Gray. Hit this blue roof with some iron hull gray. <clears throat> Looks like it's the same gray as the gray primer. But we'll see when it dries. I was hoping for a little bit darker gray. Which it will be darker once I put the uh, wash on it that I plan to put on it. Okay, so we got our iron hole gray on there. And we're going to have to let that dry before we move on to the next step. All right, we are back with the water wheel. Um, I wanna go ahead and paint the stones along the ground floor all the way around, um, and also the chimney with this color. Uh, and then we'll, and there's also in front of the water wheel. Uh, I'm gonna be painting it with Filthy Cape. Um, in this case, I am not going to be concerned about keeping it inside the bricks. I'm just going to completely coat all the bricks because later I'm going to come back with some other colors, touch a few bricks to highlight the bricks, but also I'm going to apply a wash and that wash should enhance all the grout. That's, that's the idea. All right, so when I go, I am going to avoid any wood, but basically I'm just going to put it on completely covering it. Now I do want to point out, I did water this filthy cape down so that it would go on a little bit smoother and e make it easier to control. Now I might have a little difficulty uh, meaning I might have to do a couple of coats, but that's perfectly fine by me. 
All right, so let me go ahead and do this, and then I'll be right back. All right, so we got the chimney painted with our filthy cape. I'm going to set this off to the side, let it dry before we move on to any further steps. All right, well now we're back with the water wheel. Um, there are stones around the ground floor that I wanted to accentuate a number of them, not all of them, just a random amount. So I mixed up some light gray and I'm just going to touch some of the stones. There you go. So it's, I don't know if you can see that, but I am touching some of the stones just to give it a, a variety of colors. And it's going to take me a minute to go through and do all of these stones. So I'll be right back. All right, so we got all the stones on the ground floor, either on the building or in front of the water wheel. Um, basically, I did about a 50%, like every other stone, uh, but not every stone. All right, so we're going to let those dry before we move on to one of the final steps. All right, now we're back on the water wheel, and I'm painting the chimney top cap black brown I'm using the MIG ammo Adam line black brown almost black with a little bit of brown tint it's going to be great for rusting all right black brown and we'll let that dry before we move on to the next step. All right, we are back with our uh, water wheel. I'm going to be applying uh, different washes on different aspects of the building. But on all the gray stone and the gray roof, I'm going to be using this Vallejo dark gray wash. And yeah, I'm just lathering it on there. There we go. Okay. So the roof has its. Now around the base, um, I'm going to be doing the uh, stonework as well. Okay, so I'm doing the stones. Basically, anything that's gray. I'm not using this dark gray on the wood or the stucco or the door or the roof. Well, actually, I did it. I did put it on the roof. Never mind. And then finally, the plate in front of the water wheel. All right, that actually looks very okay. Maybe a little bit of wash along the top there. All right, so now I have to I have to let this uh, wash dry because 
in my, in my experience, it takes washes um, more time to dry than paint. So I'm going to set this off to the side. I'm going to let it dry thoroughly before we come back with the next wash. All right, guys, we're back with the finished water wheel building that I might or might not use in my Quattro Bra game. But uh, there's a few things that I did to this building off camera that I think uh, you'd like to know about. Uh, one of them is that I used this natural steel on the windows. I did a little dry brushing inside the inside the windows just to give them a little bit of a, a, a reflective glassy look. Um, and then I also applied a dark wash over the entire model. Uh, that's not really true. I did the roof and I also did the stones. Uh, that's and the and the water wheel. That's pretty much the only thing that I use the dark wash. Oh, and the windows uh, and the, the top of the chimney. And that was pretty much the only place I put the dark wash. Now, I also used dry rust, uh, put a couple of spots of dry rust on the top. And I did wind up using beige brown. Uh, yeah, I did wind up using beige brown on my wheel to give it a different color than the wood in the frame of the house. I just wanted it to be a variation. Uh, <clears throat> now you see this brown on the side here. Um, I do think that I'm going to make that um, uh, like use some dirt texture on that. Maybe, maybe I'll put a tuft or two with some grass over there just to give it some additional life near the water wheel. Yeah. So I don't think I'm going to be using this during my Quattro Broad game, but uh, I do have it for any future Napoleonic games or American War of Independence. Um, the roof does not come off, so it's great for being inside of a town sector. All right, so uh, we are doing, or I am doing uh, a number of buildings in this series, so be sure to come back and check out my other Sarissa Buildings, Napoleonic videos. All right, I'll see you in the next one.